What's up guys, it's DJ with Webb. Welcome back to the channel today. We're at the Bradford for an epic wedding with Jonathan and Katie. We got a pretty epic setup today as well. We got the tubes, we got the MH150 spots, both lighting in the house. We have 24 both lighting S4s around the room. LD Maui 44 G2s ready to rock and roll. Um, it's gonna be an epic party today. I'm super excited. Stay tuned, stay tuned, let's go. Pow. What's up, what's up guys? We're here at the Bradford, just outside of Pittsburgh. North Carolina. I'm trying to figure out how we load in, all that good stuff, but it's a rainy day. We are inside the Bradford. They're still working on some stuff in here. It is rain plan, so we're doing a flip room inside. The courtyard is awesome though. I wish we could do it out there. It actually makes our life easier that we don't have to go set up ceremony out there. And then there'll be like a whole like ceremony having to flip to do the cocktail and all that. So now we just set up everything in here. We're gonna use the lapels on the main setup and it makes it a lot simpler for us to do. I will say this room is going to be a challenge. There's a lot of echo. If you can't hear from my voice, there's a lot of echo in this room. But like always, I'm here well in advance. We're about three hours. Actually, now it's three hours. I showed out like three, three hours and 15 minutes in advance just to see the lay of the land. I like this venue a lot. Kind of a interesting setup because we have to leave this door open. So we will be running one of our audio cords over here to put some totems and speakers over here. That's kind of my plan for now. I do not have a finalized plan in place, but kind of currently my thinking is to run a speaker over there and a speaker over there. That way they're spread out nice and they should give a good audio for this room. And then I'm also gonna run a cord inside for a cocktail speaker to keep you playing cocktail music. But yeah, that's kind of the plan. So I did up, I have my ideas now. This is dead center in the room, which I always love when the ceiling, the fixtures, everything is actually centered. I hate when venues have like stuff that's offset where the door is here, but the, the ceiling's over here and it just doesn't look right. Totem speaker here, totem speaker here. They're gonna be kind of compact a little bit. Then we'll use the tubes to fill in. We'll probably put like one tube on each door and then one tube on the outside of those totems. And then we'll set up most of the DJ gear over here. That's kind of my idea right now is that DJ Boof will go here, right in front of the window, Dink right here, and Rack will go back there. So we'll probably put the Rack right there for the time being. DJ Boof will be right there. Totem speaker, totem speaker, tubes, and it'll look amazing when we get it all done. Yeah, this is their dope courtyard that you would normally have cocktail in. And then they have this back lawn area over here, all AstroTurf. And then there's a ceremony area tucked down over there. Um, just one of those venues that did it right and planned it out. This, the venue is actually owned by some wedding planners that built the venue. It's pretty dope, but let's go check out inside. We're gonna go, go across and check out inside. So this is basically the inside of the house. We got the furniture set up in here. We'll probably put a cocktail speaker in here with different music playing. Kitchen over here. I believe there's a walkthrough. You can come over here inside the house. You're gonna have a bar right here, pretty epic. I also forgot to mention, I beat my assistant here, who is Hayden, which uh, hasn't been on the vlog in a minute. Hayden's actually a single op DJ, uh, basically in this area, and he helps out a lot with events, which is dope. He's helped out quite a few times now, and I always appreciate our awesome assistants. Check out that, looks dope as hell. Basically this was a house, and then they built on all this extra stuff on the sides to make it into a venue, which is so dope. Speaking of Hayden, there he is. Um, but we got an easy load and just roll down the back area, and in we go. So a little behind the scenes here on how this all works, but I showed you guys the lay of the land in terms of how I'm gonna do it. But one thing I didn't talk about is, you know, venue logistics are huge. You need to know your venue logistics. Here, I knew ahead of time because they told us, which is awesome, that we cannot store any of our cases, any of our root cases in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is unload all this stuff so that we can take our cases out, which pretty much means we're gonna set up, is the short term, but we're not gonna worry about the fine tuning setup. We're gonna worry about getting all of our stuff out of the cases and get the cases out of here. That's step number one. So you guys saw the time lapse. I'm changed now. We're fully set up, all good to go. And they did switch it there now outside. So brought 24 up lights today, all the way around the room. Tubes, MH150 spots, all both lighting gear. Been doing this new trick with the fan or with the hazer. So hazer 
this lasso fan in front of it to help kick it up and also disperse it. Two reasons. One, it puts the haze more evenly throughout the room instead of just kind of like chilling in front of the mover, in front of one mover. And two, it's not nearly as noticeable for the venue staff that may or may not approve of me using haze. We use the ADJ Haze Generator. It's an oil-based machine, which means I don't need to use as much. And honestly, they're amazing. It helps a lot with the fact that it will evenly disperse haze throughout. It lingers longer, which means you don't have to use as much. And also, the fluid like takes forever to run out. The water-based ones, you have to go for fluids so often, it's annoying. I literally am on the same gallon of haze fluid that I've been using for like the last two years. I don't use it that often, but yeah, no, literally it takes forever. Highly recommend oil-based hazers. Put a fan in front of it to blow it up. I saw JSG do that at one of the weddings up in New Jersey and uh, it works really well. Oh, and since we decided to do the ceremony, well, actually I should talk about the audio craziness that we got going on right now. You guys know that I use I got my normal setup here, but we used the drive rack PA2 here. So we're using four different outputs today. The mains are left and right are in here. Those are muted right now. One of my outs goes over here to an LD Systems Maui 5 Go there to run our ceremony audio. They're literally gonna be right there. So we can use this rack for all of our microphone needs for both ceremony and reception, but also, Cocktail is gonna be down around here and inside. So we ran a line here because this is gonna be the bar for the whole event all the way around here. And right here we have another LD Systems Maui 5 Go tucked in. That's on another different output so that way I can, I can put audio back here where the bar is. And just in general, I would like to highly, highly suggest to all of the DJs watching this that you guys work on great placement for audio. I see so many DJs. So many DJs. Like this is where I was supposed to set up. What they would do is literally put their booth right here, speaker there, speaker there, light there, light there, and it's like all compact in the one spot. Utilize the room. Utilize the room. I put a totem over there, a totem over there, a speaker over there, a speaker over there. That way we have good sound distribution throughout. Ran another line to put another speaker over there. Was I paid to do that? No, but it's what is gonna make it right. That's just my preach to all you DJs out there. Do what's gonna make it right from a sound perspective and from a look perspective to the dance floor. This is your main area, so make the lighting work for the dance floor. Make the sound work for the dance floor and the room so that everyone can hear everywhere. We're gonna get started with ceremony here soon. I give to you all right, for you guys doing wireless DMX, we've actually made a discovery in terms of a better unit for your wireless DMX transmitter. If you guys have some of your up lights that might stop working at the back of the room, one thing you can do on the S4s is flip the antenna out, but the new IR4s don't have that luxury. So we actually learned that there is a higher power transmitter. So this right here is the both lighting. Uh, it's basically the 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmitter. It's got way more power built into it. It's actually got three power settings. So it's got three power settings, the same colors. So you can set basically if you want one through seven, whatever the color is. But this guy right here has way more output power. I've been using this for the last month now and I've had zero dropout with any of my lights, especially in big ballrooms that are like 75 plus feet. This thing is it. So if you guys want to check it out, I'll link it down below. It's on our website right now. But if you guys are having any issues with DMX dropout, you should highly look into getting one of these to help increase it. Also check out my pro tips on like not using the initial channel. So like all the lights come on red to start. Switch off that, go to blue, teal, white, one of the other ones, try that first. But if you're having any problems, I highly recommend you pick up one of these. But overall, we're, we're basically ready to go. We're, uh, we got the cocktail speaker playing over there, which is playing off of this using the drive rack like we talked about earlier. Um, but yeah, Hayden's behind the camera tonight. We got some awesome stuff planned for you guys. Pretty much it. So I'll catch you guys at introductions. Let's go. In family, friends, direct your attention up to our dance floor as they share their first dance together officially as husband and wife.
right there is a successful gig number one, gig number two, coming tomorrow. So, anyways, I'll catch you guys tomorrow for gig number two, and then number three after that. What's up guys, day two, we're out here at Hayfield uh, on McCutcheon Farms. Uh, been here before. I was trying to look up the gig log of the last time I was out here to figure out how I set it up, but I can't find it. So gonna look through my phone one more time for photos to maybe figure it out. Only thing I do know is I'm gonna have to run a speaker up top like I did last time to make sure we got good audio all the way around. We got intelligent movers today, no up lighting, tubes, tubes, intelligent lighting, ceremony doing four microphones, two handhelds, two lapels, and yeah, so it'll be a fun little set today. We're gonna get it started. So switch over to GoPro, GoPro for time lapse. Um, so, so you guys saw the time lapse inside. We got most of it set up. Uh, this is currently the ceremony situation which is a lot of microphones today. We have four microphones we're rocking. Three of them are Audio-Technicas, and the fourth is a Phoenix Pro PTU-7-1, which is this guy right here. So shout out my boy, of course, Eric Mazigale, because uh, one of these lapels, the mic portion, yesterday, completely broke. Like the internal wires completely broke. So instantly added that to my list of things we need to buy for everybody to have a backup. I um, basically asked him if I could borrow a whole lapel. So that way we can rock. But we're rocking two handhelds, two lapels. We have two singers. They're up here and two lapels. And this wind is absolutely what the wind was like there. This camera might do a good job of removing the wind. I don't know. They'll be playing for the ceremony and for the cocktail. Again, we're just doing microphones. So the handheld audio technicas actually seem to do very well in the wind, surprisingly. The lapels, they do decent. <laughs> They're gonna do pretty good. I, I'm gonna specifically put them on the uh, groom and the officiant in a way that's going to reduce the wind. Yamaha mixer, LD over here, we're just charging it up to make sure it's fully, fully charged. It's pretty much there because we're gonna use this inside as well. So let's go in and show you what we got going on inside. Pretty nice setup. So we got the MH150 spots again today. Totems on both sides and we ran the power from above. So little pro tip or thing for you guys to consider, especially when you're at rooms like this that have an upper balcony, is there's typically outlets on the inside of there so you can drop power down to power things like movers, cold sparks, whatever it might be. Four tubes, two back there, two right here. Of course, these don't have to have power because they're battery powered. No up lights, except for we got one inside of each one of them. A couple are gonna go back there on my booth. Potentially might put those somewhere else, I don't know. We'll see. LD Maui 44 G2s. Pretty straightforward setup today. Uh, we need to do an audio check with all of our stuff here. Make sure our lighting is squared away. We'll probably take the LD upstairs to make sure we dial that in correctly and we'll be good to go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the reception portion for Colby and Anderson today. Can I hear some noise for our newlyweds out there? How you guys feeling? How you guys feeling? Let me try this real quick. Everyone back in this corner back here, are you guys ready to get the celebration kicked off this evening for Anderson and Colby? How about over here? You guys ready? Yeah. Everyone up front, where are you guys at? You guys ready to get this going? Awesome, awesome. Direct your attention over there as we're gonna kick things off with our parents. And of course, first up, we have Eric Anderson's parents, and that is Vic and Teresa O'Neill. Right behind them, help me welcome in Colby's parents, and we have Steve and Angie Stewart. <laughs> we have our flower girls, we have Sawyer and Whitley. <laughs> Moving into our wedding party, help me welcome in Grayson and Sean. Let's keep the hands going for Hannah and Matthew. Let's keep moving along here. We have Ellie and Kyle. Make 
make some big noise here for our matron of honor, Kaylee, and our best man, Zachary. Get a little out of your seats. I need you to scream. I need you to shout. Help me make as much noise as possible to help me welcome in for the second time tonight, Mr. and Mrs. Colby Stewart.
fake mock send-off outside. So I need everyone to make their way through the bar to the outside doors. I think you need to take a lady one to view it. I think they got some there too. But we're gonna go take some photos like they're leaving, but they're not really. And then afterwards you guys can come back and keep party. So Jacob, we're doing the, um, the send-off, the fake send-off, 30 minutes early. Can we recover and actually have a dance for? Who knows? We'll see. morning bright and early day three day three loading up uh loading up all the stuff trying to get figured out what all we need for the wedding show 
these are my siding guys they're redoing our whole entire house so it makes it fun and then also diy project we're redoing the whole bar inside our house with new cabinetry so we're staying all the cabinets it's fun it's fun and this is probably gonna be the first time i have mentioned it on the channel but we're actually moving into a 2600 square foot facility uh in november so not sure when this video is going to get out probably it'll get out in november but middle of november we're in the process of getting all the paperwork signed and everything but we're moving into about i think it's 2600 square feet of 50 percent office space 50 percent warehouse space because we're just outgrowing if you guys know from the channel pretty much everything is in my garage and we also have two 10 by 20 storage units that are jam-packed full of mostly christmas lights for Christmas light business, which is what that van down there for. We just picked up that van about a month or two ago, probably about a month ago, honestly, it was in September. But yeah, the company is growing and growing at scale. We're currently on track for a overall company growth of about 300% over last year, which is insane. That's not just one company, that's all of the companies combined are growing substantially. The DJ company is growing. It's gonna do more than last year. The green, the holiday light company is gonna be double last year. Our both lighting side is growing. It's it's crazy man business is crazy life is crazy uh thank you guys so much though for the support if you guys are watching at this point in the video you've been through the first two days and you guys are my true loyal supporters that are watching the grind of what uh me and the team are going through i mean i'm just taking you guys along from my perspective but literally the team is crushing it we've done another we did four other weddings yesterday we did uh one other one on friday the team's about to show up we're all gonna go do the wedding show we got more coming next weekend and more next week and we just got we just won a very big bid for a giant party coming in november joe bun will actually be the dj at the party uh we're just doing the lighting and production for it so it's gonna be cool big stuff man big stuff lots of holiday like that yeah thank you guys hashtag squad in the comments down below thank you guys for supporting i love sharing the grind i love showing you guys how you can also grind work your way hustle and get what you want man it, it's it's no easy thing you need to have a team you got to build a team like shout out I, I can't i say my team a lot my team is one of the biggest catalysts to our growth we have five full-time employees we just added health benefits for all the employees this month it's insane you got to have a good team you got to have a strong team put money and energy into your team pay your team correctly pay your team well pay your assistants well and it will prosper but you also got to put in the work i grind my ass off every week especially during these busy seasons it's a grind anyways i'm gonna finish loading up everything for the wedding show and we'll get on the road when the team gets here we here we all set up team already knocked it out love this setup though we are at the very back of the thing so this is like the back side but like our booth's all the way in the back we got the tubes and everything but we got this whole corner to like throw all our stuff which is nice but yeah i need to plug in some of the stuff we got the bistro lights up top the neon sign the tubes up lights turntable booth got all our marketing material all set and ready to go qr codes brochures we got to get our gift bags assembled we're good to go a little speaker in the back here technically we're not supposed to play music but you know we got no i knocked it over our delicate signs beautiful these signs don't like to stay these are the wedding wire and the knot signs. They're expensive. Beautiful. Alright, I'm gonna go get changed. Alright, all changed, all changed. Show out getting the bags ready. What up? Yo, what yo, up? what it do? What it do? We gotta show out, we gotta show out. Marcel is back here doing I don't know what he's doing, but he's we're not doing nothing because we don't wanna get copyrighted. Oh. I guess that's a thing. That's what that's what the editor Joe's for is to make sure that we don't get copyright strikes in our videos. But yeah, we set up, we chilling. Let's let's talk about like some pro tips on wedding shows. If you guys haven't seen my videos on wedding shows, I got like the five tips, all that for wedding shows. Check it out. This is our setup today. One thing I highly recommend any of you guys do at wedding shows, and this is a testament of why we do it, because we're the only one at the show doing it. If you look up through here, actually, let's go up top. Let's go up top, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about all right you look out over the horizon right see how everyone keeps their stuff within their like the top of the actual booth we do is we bring the height up by doing uh bringing in our own pipe and drape stands we get these nice big banners we got these banners made at georgia expo so these are 12 feet in the air they got fusion on the inside dj lighting planning we really need to get some new ones made because we really don't do planning dj lighting photo booth or something i don't know these get up nice and high so that 
everybody can see it. So when you come in, you see this, you see the string lighting up in the air, nice and tall, really adds presence to like curiosity as to what booth is over there that's so high up in the air. Even the tubes, if you see right there, they're actually a good two, three feet above the tops of everything. So that's huge. That's huge. So if you can transport it or you have the means to do so, I highly recommend you bring in your own pipe and drape stands to get some banners up really high in the air or just in general, something that gets it up above everybody else. Second thing all you DJs out there need to understand is you don't need to bring your DJ setup. You do not need your DJ speakers. You can bring your DJ booth if you got something cool to show that basically says you're a DJ. You could just bring your DJ controller and slap it down on the table, honestly, I don't care. But you don't need to bring the big speakers, you don't need to bring your totems, you don't need to bring your movers. It's not necessary. All you need is some up lighting, you need some marketing material, you need something that says you're a DJ. Uh, the tubes are a great addition because they break down nice and easily. Very nice to do. I always like to make sure I have QR codes in the booth, make it easy for people to scan it, fill out our forms. I would highly recommend you get some brochures made. They don't have to have pricing on them, none of ours do. They just have basically QR codes that go to different things. They just basically have some cool photos, talk about our core things that we do. Just like, that's all you need. Just some testimonials on the back. You just need a little brochure that makes you look very professional, very legit. If you're a Chambers of Commerce member, that's a dope thing to have. Have yourself some laptops. We have basically our our contact form pulled up here so people can fill out their form right inside the booth over here same thing we got a tablet we got some business cards laying out we got another thing to scan we got some wedding wire awards this is pretty much all you need you just need something to collect their information I would actually argue that's the most important thing in your booth is to have a way to collect your clients information whether it's your CRM pen and paper anything because yes you're gonna get a mass list from most of these shows afterwards of like everyone that attended but you've missed the boat then at that point. When you have an interaction with a client here at the show and you can get their information and follow up immediately the next day, you have a way higher chance of booking that client. Also, you're gonna beat out any of the competitors that didn't get their information at the show. So that was one big lesson I learned and as soon as I started doing it, it really made shows pay off a lot more. How do you get clients information? Well, you gotta give them something in exchange more than likely to get them to fill out the information. Best thing is like that they'll fill it out, you know, and because they love you, they're having a great time, but just to edge them over the board, you wanna have something to give them. So we give them some nice little goodie bags here and inside them we have our little glass cups. Um, we do need to get a couple of those out to like set on the tables. But look, it's a little stemless wine glass, discountmug.com. We bought a thousand of them like two years ago and it worked out to be about $2 per cup. So we spent a couple grand and got like 2,000 cups that are custom branded and wine glasses and we give them out at all these shows. We give them to our clients after the events as like a thank you for booking us. Like it's just something to give them in exchange for their information. That way you can get them to do it. Some people that have photo booths, you know, when they fill out the photo booth, oh, we'll send you the photo if you give us your information, you can do that, all kinds of things like that. But I'll stress, it's not about the gear, even though we got a lot of cool gear here, but we don't have a lot of stuff. I mean, other than the fancy booth, we just brought a little LD over there in the corner. You could use a little tiny ceremony speaker just to have some audio. Um, we got a cool custom neon sign there. Shout out Solstice, Solstice Neon. Guys, that Fusion Neon sign, it looks better in person. Uh, the camera's blowing it out a little bit. Put some bistro lights up above, you know, just little stuff. I mean, we used to bring totems and movers to these shows and it was just like, it wasn't necessary. For the longest time, we just brought up lights, honestly. This year we're adding the tubes because they're cool. So I think they're about to open up here in a couple minutes. So I'll check in periodically throughout the show maybe and see how it's going and let you guys know. Almost fully broke down, almost fully broke down.